On this week's Ritual Misery podcast, we're going to talk about a boring-ass Apple announcement. Ah, uh, but not a boring-ass Spider-Man game. And Amos had some kind of crazy rash. Yeah, it was, a, uh, it was a bit of a slow burn. Our guest this week is Justin Robert Young. It is me. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 187 for all the audio problems I'm having right now. Uh, this is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and I don't know what's going on with my mission, right, my stuff right now. This is crazy. Uh, but we're live, so screw it. Hey, Kent, um, I'm going to push you off to the side like I normally do because... Uh, hey, Justin, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. How are you guys? Doing great, man. It's Thursday night. That means it's ritual misery time, and it's always a good time on this show. Um, thanks, thanks for coming on, man. It's great to have you. Oh, no, it's always always a pleasure. Always a good time with you two gents. Uh, well, <laughs> surely you jest, but we'll take it anyway because we're starving for attention. That's why we're podcasters. Uh, <laughs> That's kind of how that works. Yeah, <laughs> uh, man, we had a we had a, an Apple announcement this week, and um, I couldn't even watch it because it was stupid and boring. Really, uh, Justin? Now, last year you ran out right away and, and pre-ordered the iPhone. Is that going to be a thing that you do this year? Uh, that's been the story most years, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I I normally love the new iPhones, and and specifically for the ten, I really wanted the ten because mm. uh, it had, it was the first kind of like radically redesigned kind of iPhone uh, that they'd had in a while. Uh, things had gotten a little commoditized in, in recent mm -hmm. years, which I think is kind of general amongst all smartphones. Uh, but mm -hmm. this year, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with the 10. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I need the bump right now. Uh, and I would love to go back to that 7 plus form factor but I don't think I want to do it for fourteen hundred dollars. So <laughs> right, oh my god. Um, I think I'm just gonna sit on my state of the art uh, piece of equipment, and uh, we'll we'll see what happens next year. I was super disappointed with the pronunciation of the name of the phone. So the the 10s, it's written out like letters X S. I was really hoping that they would they would go ahead and call it the X S. Because well, that's but they've I already made that excess. decision. Like they, they made that they, they they made that call with the ten where they wanted X to be ten. Everybody yeah. calls it the sure, iPhone sure. X. But uh, uh, so I mean, I, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I'm not thrilled with the nomenclature uh, in general. Even when I've been initially skeptical of Apple names, they've tend tended to win me over. Like. I was not in love with the iPad name, and and then it's like, oh well, of course it's the iPad. Uh, but this one is, I don't know, max, like, why not plus the <laughs> iPhone XS plus, like you just do that. I don't know. I already like that. That was good. I yeah. don't really get what the max of it all is. Max just, you know, it seems kind of outmoded to me, but, uh, we'll see. Uh, to be honest, I would have bought it if it were closer to the thousand dollar range, um, yeah. as it, as it inches up to. I mean, I just winced when I, I paid for, like, uh, I just got a, a, a personal trainer, and I, like, had to pay for X amount of sessions ahead of time. <laughs> and, like, I winced at that going into the four-figure range, and that's, like, investing in my health. I don't <laughs> think that I can, I can legitimately say, like, because, like, look, Apple always the, the 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 speed boost in the new phones are always worthwhile in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like they will always justify it, and therefore your old phone will slow down because it's not there to handle it. Mm -hmm. But that being said, if the state of their AR games aren't amazing, and like despite the fact that there is insane AR hardware on these phones, and even the ten, uh, there's not really a ton of great applications for it as of now. Right. I mean, theoretically, the one that would you would use the most would be something like Pokemon Go, but nobody who actually enjoys that game turns on AR because it's such a battery <laughs> right. suck as it is. Um, yeah. So 
until that's the case and I can really rev up that chip, you know, and I can really do some rad stuff on it, I think I'm where I want to do rad stuff. I can do rad stuff on it now. Um, I think I'm going to, I'm going to hang out specifically for 1500, man, 1500. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like, we're moving now. We're moving into like, you know, like, should I, uh, you know, should I go on vacation territory? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. $1,500. Yeah. Yeah. What you, about you, dude? Um, the, the, are you excited? <sighs> you, are, are you pre-ordering right after the show ends? No. No, that's and, what we did last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, last year, last year the show's over. We we sat here and talked to each other while we pre-ordered our phones. Um, the, w- w- so it's a combination of factors. One, I don't think there's enough new to really entice me. Um, the the larger size, I'm actually this middle size that the ten is between the the regular and the the plus is like perfect for me. I don't need anything bigger. I don't really want anything bigger. My battery life, my performance, everything is just still so top notch on the phone that I have right now, and it's there's just nothing really added to it. So, and I'm still wondering where the hell the nine went. Like, why did nine just disappear? Like, we were kind of hoping that nine this would be nine's year, you know, and it they didn't do that. Um, I think it's just like OS ten. Like, we're gonna be stuck with iPhone ten and variants of that for like the next ten years. Yeah, and see, the- well, I, but but this is this is its own version, right? Yeah. Like, this is this is a different kind of phone. This is where they want to kind of like reset the life cycle of the iPhone. That's why they're mm-hmm. sweeping everything else off the board. Mm-hmm. Um, I, again, I don't want to harp on it, but I'm not in love with them moving into like Samsung style, random ass names with like dumb, like, you know, suffixes. Uh, <laughs> that's, I, I, I don't know. But that being said, uh, look, I, I, I think that we, if you're following tech and you're talking about tech, there's this, the, the, a tremendous pull to say nothing new, right? Mm. But the problem with that is that it really, to me, is a criticism from five years ago when it was on the onus of every phone that came out, be it iOS or Android, to really break ground on something, to really mm. do something that is that was not possible before. And I don't think that it is for lack of engineering that that doesn't happen as much. I think... Part of it is that the next big things that are looking to happen, and that is AR, that is wearables being more of a thing, um, they're just we're, – we're still at the edge phase. The, the, the tech hasn't caught up with it enough to be amazing. To be honest, from that whole Apple announcement, the thing that I was most excited for is the new Apple Watch mm. uh, because I think the Apple Watch to me – and I have the most recent one now – the Apple Watch is a device that I think is like I don't who knows if this will be the generation, but horsepower wise, it's like this new one is right at the precipice of me wanting to use it all the time. Yeah. But like mm. it's just slow enough for me not to or to think twice about it. Mm. Uh now that it's got a ra- it's got a radio on it so it can get mobile data. And it, the sensors continue to get better and the horsepower is a little bit more like there's no reason why I should use Uber on any device but my watch because mm. it knows where I am. I should be able to, to put a pin in a, in a certain area right there. That is a one screen, like a postage stamp screen yep. uh, a kind of application and that's where I think the promise of that device is. And, you know, I would say to me that the future of the, the iPhone is continuing to do everything that the iPhone does now with some cool AR stuff that just kind of becomes, you know, social coup. And the future of the watch is let's take all those apps that don't need your full phone's real estate and put them mm-hmm. on your wrist. Yeah. Um, so for me, being because Ken didn't even have an Apple Watch, he's seen mine a couple times, but he doesn't have one. I have a Series Zero that I wear as my night watch uh, to, for my alarm and things like that, and a Series Three with the LTE that I wear my, as my daily wear. And the LTE was really what sealed it for me last year because now I can like leave my phone away, or you know, if I if I go to Walmart and don't have my phone, it's not such such a bad thing because I can still be reached or whatever. 
um, the EKG meter on or sensor on the new one is really the the one thing that really like wow that's that would be awesome that'd be really cool. Um, and the yeah, and that that the, to me was the most impressive thing yeah. about the watch is the uh, FDA certification as a medical device yeah. to read uh, to read e- EKG, and I think that's an important area of that the tech is going into is personal medical devices, uh, devices that are small enough and powerful enough that it, it can actually save your life. And and I think uh, the Apple Watch is making giant steps towards that. Yeah. I, but I'm still not going to get a new one though. I like, I like the bigger screen. <laughs> I like the smaller profile, I like the longer battery life, I like the EKG. It's just not, it's not enough for me this year. So, so, Speaking of medical things, Amos, uh, you told me earlier in the week that you had some kind of rash thing going on. Tell, tell yeah. us what that's about. I had an allergic reaction to something this week, and I don't know what it was, but it's concentrated mostly in my palms. Um, <laughs> right. It, it, i got to guess. <laughs> yeah, that's clearly not it. Because, well, see, I was thinking about it today, and if, like, what's the half-life on a dick allergy, right? Like, because I'm 41 <laughs> years old, so you figure 30 years before my body said enough playing with your dick it's time to show you an allergic reaction to this <laughs> i'm not i'm not really sure that's that's the that's the going rate on that um but uh i i don't know where it came from it might have been from the beers that i was having this weekend because we ate at a new place or it might have been the food or whatever but it it's it's just like of all the places you can have an itchy puffy rash your hands are they've got to be like top three of the most inconvenient places so is it all over your hands or is it just on the palms? Uh, it, it goes around both sides and goes up the arms and down the <laughs> torso, but it's mostly just the palms. Yeah, I man, I can't think of anything to say other than just more dick jokes. Right. So no, I'm gonna yeah. ask and, I'm gonna and, ask Justin to butt in here <laughs> and see if he has something other than a dick joke to say about your rash on your hands. Uh no. <laughs> <laughs> He's, All right. he's just happy hey, it's not uh, happening to him. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Hey, have you guys? I mean, what the G- fuck am I supposed to say? You have a rash. Like, I don't know about a doctor. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, maybe the like, new like, Apple Watch. You didn't even. Die. You didn't even tell me about the thing. You just rushed right into the dick joke. So, like, I have no <laughs> idea what you're going through. How long it's been in existence? Like, I'm. I'm glad you're jacking it. Like, uh, congrats. <laughs> Um, th- hey, here's a, here's a weird side effect oh. though, because they, they put me on steroids to try to get, get rid of the, you know, inflammation and stuff like that. Since I've been taking the, the, the steroids, I, my back and my knee have been feeling great. So I think they just need to keep giving me steroids. Maybe I'll get buff one day and, uh, won't need a personal trainer. Yeah, <laughs> no, dude, get on that Winstrol dog. Like that 80s <laughs> shit. <laughs> hey, have you guys played this new Spider-Man game on the PS4? I haven't. I don't have a PS4. I don't. I don't play video games except for Zelda and Mario and Hearthstone and Pokemon Go. But uh, right. other than that, I don't really play video games. I don't have any of the major consoles. So it looks yeah. a fucking amazing though. It looks yeah. great. Yeah, it's pretty great. My son bought it the other day. Uh, I think it was like Monday or something. He he picked it up and I I played it this week and oh my god, I'm I'm kind of like you, Justin, where most of my video game playing is on my phone to include Pokemon go. Um, so I don't, I don't play the console games all that much, but when he started playing this and I was watching him, I was like, dude, dude, give me, give me that controller. I want to, <laughs> I want to play this. So it's really fun. The The controls are, are a little complex at times, depending on like what type of attack you're trying to do, mm-hmm. but swinging through Manhattan is the most fun that you can have in like five minutes. It's like, it is so just so smooth and just so like such a rush, you almost feel like you're actually swinging between the buildings. So, um, yeah. So if you're ever around a, a PS4, I, I definitely say check it out. Like, uh, it, it, it's really cool. I don't know if they have a downloadable demo out there, but if they do, I, I highly recommend everybody checking it out. It's it's such a fun game. Um, Amos, what? Yeah, what, what it, did you do? it seems great. I don't know. I don't know if it was great. Um, if it's like good enough to get a PS4, but I don't know. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. See, I, yeah, ha- I have I have a PS4 and I, and I don't know if it's great enough to like I, I, I don't I don't know, man. I'm like I'm I'm falling out of my video game phase where I was really into it for a while. And now I'm just kind of creeping out and it's just not. Uh, uh, it, we're getting old, I think. Yeah. I mean, I could, or, or I'm just filling up my time <laughs> trying to retire from the damn military. 
Uh, yeah. Either one of those could be it. <laughs> so yeah. So what do you got going on this week, Amos? That uh, that's pretty geeky. I and this is perfect to have Justin on because Justin, have you heard of the podcast Slow Burn? I I listened to the first season, mm -hmm. and if the producer is the same as the first season in the second season, mm -hmm. I went to college with him. Oh, nice. Hmm. Um, Very so cool. Slow Burn initially started as a mini series about uh, Watergate, about the Watergate scandal, the presidency of, of Richard Nixon and how it all went down. There's a lot of behind the scenes interviews, um, some interpretive history, history stuff, and it's just really good. It's, it's almost documentary. But it's got a lot of personality to it, and it's really fun and very interesting if you're into history, especially if you're into presidential history. Season two is all about the Clintons. And it's five episodes in right now, five of eight. It's really good. It's produced by Slate, and I'm not, I don't remember the, the host name, unfortunately, because I suck at life. It, 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 it's the same guy, though, right? Yeah, the it's, same a, it's the same guy, yep. And it's it's expertly done. It's 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 a it's just an amazing podcast. If you're into presidential history, go go check out Slow Burn. Um, very easy to listen to, and it's it's not uh, a lot of times you get podcasts that have a lot of stuff from the past, and they they play the audio, and it's just crap audio. And this isn't one of those. It's it's a lot of well, because it's all from the '90s, right? Like, so the audio is was you know it's not HD broadcast that we would have now, but it's, right. but it's almost charming. Like it's it's like an Instagram filter. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I wonder is it coincidence that the first season is a president that was on the verge of being impeached, and then season two is an impeached president? No, no, no. It was originally just going to be the Nixon thing, and when that really you know got a lot of traction, took off. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they it's like, well, what do we do plan. next? Well, so let me ask you this because. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to say this because there is an element of my feelings about slow burn that are rooted in the fact that I'm working on a project that is similar to it in that it is something that is discussing presidential history. Um, <laughs> and I was not in love with slow burn. Uh, I, I tended to think that the, the Nixon season was, a little bit more let me read you the wikipedia than it was let me learn you some stuff mm. which like oh, okay. on one hand is like great because we're now so far away from the nixon thing that none of us i mean a, a vast majority of their audience didn't live through it so like literally just explaining and on this day this guy wore a crazy flowered shirt as was fashionable at the time <laughs> is like interesting <laughs> right um but it wasn't i don't feel like i learned much more other than listening to some old tape and hearing what i thought were i have a very complicated relationship with like as a fan of interviews and history podcasts because on one hand there's nothing substituting the person who was there right mm -hmm. like as a journalist you want firsthand people to talk to you but on right. the other hand this is so long ago and oftentimes if you're talking to somebody you want to use enough of their audio to make it worth it and i don't it, it kind of has no you have no choice but to make more of the story about them or this moment that they're expert in whether or not the story is best served by it. Gotcha. And yeah. that's where sometimes I felt slow burn to me, like didn't give me, there was a lot of like, just kind of glazing over, uh, or like there was one moment in the first season where they were talking about like how Walter Cronkite kind of spurred things on and like, uh, uh you know, airing this one, a piece that kind of kept this story going in a place that it would have died. And like, man, I, I, I have very complicated opinions kind of about the media and how much the media loves to talk about the media. But, right. uh, I, I, I just, that was one of those things where they wound up interviewing somebody about it. And it's like, uh, I mean, I feel like there's so much more to this conspiracy there's so much more that even I know about Watergate that they didn't get to that I was like, 
you know, I know where they were going and this is very, very hard. And they have done two gigantic successful series and I'm still doing research for my first one. Right. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I, I don't want to, um, I don't want to poop on it because I think it is well done. And I also think that their producer might be going to a wedding I'm going to in three weeks. So, um, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll ask then, but, um, it's uh, uh, I don't know. I, I how are they handling the Clinton thing? Because that's the other thing is that Nixon is kind of ancient history. You talk about Nixon, and you're basically talking about you know Voldemort and when he took over Hogwarts, right? Uh, Clinton is you know obviously still very much a figure in American politics, and Hillary Clinton is obviously very much a figure in American politics still. Uh, mm. Do they? I mean, the Clintons in the 90s weren't the Clintons now. And, and just even by the idea that they served two terms in office, we can't look at them in the same way as we did in the, in the, in the early 90s. Like, how do they handle that? Um, well, it's really approaching. So, like, episode five, the latest one, is, is a, basically a long interview with Linda Tripp and kind of an anecdote wrapped around the interview. Um, they're really going more the the scandal itself and not so much about the Clintons, although it does discuss quite a bit of the Clintons' history back in Arkansas when Bill took over the governorship. And, um, you know, because it, it ties into the, it, the whole Ken Starr angle of the story kind of ties in that way because um, the, the investigations that were going on from way back then. Um, and it's really handled a lot the same way, but I'm, I lived through the Clinton scandal, uh, the, 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 the impeachment process. It's, kind of like you that's where i got really interested in the the presidential process and like what well this stuff actually matters and there's checks and balances and things um and it's it's handled a lot the same way as the as the watergate one except i'm learning stuff here whereas on the watergate one it's kind of a refresher course like you said you know here's some major key points so what is something that you learned about the 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 clinton uh scandal well for i'll go with the most recent episode I didn't know Linda Tripp and Monica Lewinsky were friends for like two years before oh, yeah. she started recording. Like they'd already discussed her thing and she had to go back through and relive all those conversations to get Monica to come out and say all the things that she said. Um, I didn't know Monica had been kicked out of the White House and was told, hey, we'll, put, we'll bring you back after the midterm. We don't need a messy situation here. Uh, like there, there's things like that that were, were, oh, wow, this is actually a lot more conniving than I thought it was. There's more, there's more depth to the story than just the president had an intern. Does Linda Tripp talk about her Christmas ornament shop? She does. She mentions it at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing. Oh, Christmas <laughs> also, ornament shop. No, and also yeah. if you look on Yelp, one of the reviews is uh, uh, nice shop, but the owner was kind of nosy. <laughs> oh, oh, damn um, no it was like it's like a real review i think it's a real review I mean, it's written like a real review and also it might be also referring to her husband but it, you can't you yeah. can't not laugh at that um right <laughs> so to, to bring it full circle then when i was listening to slow burn episode five well season two episode five they're talking very specifically about the white the, the stain on the blue dress the white stain on the blue yeah. dress yeah. And they kind of, it goes back to Linda Tripp and she's calling her editor in New York saying, Hey, I finally got a real story or whatever. And then it cuts into the, the producer and he's like more right after this. And it goes into an advertisement for gobble. <laughs> oh, the, the food service, the, what? the food service, yeah, gobble. The, the food delivery service. And I was like, this is, that's, that couldn't have been an accident. <laughs> Like, come on. It's it's within like 30 seconds. I'd play it if I, you know, if I had it queued up, which I meant to. But um, yeah, it's literally boom from from white white stain where, you know, she he, he lets her get him off to a gobble advertisement. That was, that's funny. That's hilarious. That was, I thought that's that was yeah. Awesome. You know, I don't know. I, 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 I I'm, I'm curious to listen to it because I, I do think that they that they are, are a very rigorous team and, and the podcast is great because it is so packed with uh, a, a, a good editorial eye toward that content. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am, I am curious just because slate is very much their brand 
is a liberal brand. I don't think that that's a secret, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and the Clintons are a complicated, if deified, figure. You know, mm, yeah. uh, uh, together. I, I refer to them as a singular <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. you know, certainly, certainly at that point, you know, they were. You know, it was, it was the, the, the co-president. Yeah, yep. definitely. Billery. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, but it, it, it does handle it much the same way as it handled the Nixon thing, where it's not necessarily as much about Nixon, although it is somewhat, but it's more about the circumstances around and how they reacted. Um, probably more so with this one, it's really more about the the investigation behind the impeachment versus Clinton personally. So if you are a political history nerd, you should check out the podcast Slow Burn and see if you enjoy it. Speaking of which, if you enjoy this show, you can head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Show us that you give a fuck by giving us a buck. That's how you can get us off. <laughs> um, Amos, go ahead and, uh, go ahead and play that. Well, uh, play this, play this, that sound. This one, this one right, uh, right, right here. Attention. In the last 30 minutes, kids done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kids game. Oh, Play with uh, him. Play yeah, with thank him. you, Jay, again for the sounder. I've got a game for you guys. Okay. And it is called Action News or Fake News. Amos, this is the second iteration of this game that you've played. Uh, uh, this is the special jury edition. Did I fail where- the first time? Uh, I believe you did. I okay. think you I think you lost. I don't remember who our guest was, but I just got to keep the street sure going. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Justin, you haven't played this game yet. Obviously, I ripped off the name of your new game news. Uh, I was inspired actually to make this game because I received my copy of Action News in the mail earlier that week. So, uh, this this game, I'm going to read a news headline and you tell me if it is fake or real. Okay. All right, Amos, pick a number between 1 and 50. 7. You picked 7. My number was 22. So uh, you picked odd. It's actually even, so jury gets to go first. However you want to justify it. (laughs) All right, Justin, is this headline... A real news story or a fake news story? A man high on bath salts cut off his genitals and microwaved them. Real news or fake news? I'm going to say that that is fake news. That is, in fact, fake news. Yeah, I would I would say that uh, only because I think bath salts is kind of passe. Mm. I think that bath salts are kind of out of uh, out of the out of the out of the news stream. Now, think, you know, now we're we're now now we're back to meth and opioids. If, right. If, yeah. if it was real news, where would it have taken place? Uh, <laughs> well, probably. I mean, come on, you know that. You're just you're just you know pointing out that there's only one state that has anything interesting happening. That is my home state of Florida. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Amos. Your headline uh-huh. is this: real news or fake news? Former manager of DOD Aerospace Threat Program says UFOs are real. I'm going to say that's a real headline. That is, in fact, a real headline. That just sounds like some wacky shit doodle thing some old Air Force this guy is, would say to yeah, the choir. Yeah, this this one caught my eye because this has been in the news, not this particular story, but over the last, like, I don't know, three, four months. There's been a lot of stories about this, like hmm. like Air Force pilots coming out saying that they they've seen objects in the sky that they couldn't identify that moved really fast. I grew uh, up watching Unsolved Mysteries, and one of those was a triangle with uh with, of lights flying around South Southern California in Nevada, and yeah. knowing full well that there was the B two stealth that I wasn't allowed to tell anybody about because they I wasn't supposed <laughs> to know about it. Like, so, yeah, yeah. And, and plus, I got I got to say, man, the more the more the, the older I get, the more cynical I get about uh, just the the old beliefs of you know there's got to be UFOs because I think 
like as I'm as I'm getting older, I'm realizing just how expansive the universe is and how impossible it is that we're the only planet with life. But that same realization comes in with how far it is for anyone else to get here. Yeah, so, why the fuck would they? Come here? Right. Yeah. My, my, Justin, my, are we are we being visited by aliens? No. Because <laughs> they're already here. Because it says the alien, right? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, yeah, but yeah. He, but he, like, no. I mean, not in in the way that we, you know, I don't know. It, it just, it's it's like, we, we can barely categorize how our government works in the media. <laughs> I, I don't think that we're going to be like, that we're going to know exactly when an alien is. <laughs> right. Or that we right, know Jay- anything to do when they got here. All right, Justin, your next headline. Democrats demand Brett Kavanaugh submit DNA test to prove he's not actually Hitler. Real news or fake? <laughs> the funny thing is that they might have him submit DNA because of another thing, but I don't I think that this is fake news. Uh, it, yeah. I don't think that it, it was about Hitler, although apparently there's some uh some something about him uh, maybe forcing himself on a woman. So maybe they're gonna have him spit in a spit in a cup at some point. Oh man. yeah, that's oh my gosh. Like, yeah, that's th- crazy. I don't want to get where, super. This is where politics are, are right now. Politics yeah. is I don't know what, whatever the the proper form of that is. Politics right. is the, yeah. All right, Amos, your next headline. Store caught sticking. Uh, let me let me start that over, so I can put please fastest on the right syllable here. All right, store caught sticking googly eyes on fish to make them look fresh. Is that like real it, or... it seems legit, but I don't I don't necessarily think like there's anything actually wrong with that. Like, do, if, do, <laughs> like if googly eyes are making your fish look fresh, if that's if that's the clientele that you have that you need googly eyes for them to buy the fish, I'm not sure the googly eyes are the problem. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go real. No, that is that is indeed real. Although I think that it's kind of a it's a it's a funnier headline as it's written. As I understand the story, it is a fairly high end fish market, but they weren't like, you know, give it to your four year old googly eyes. Like they were more sophisticated fraud uh, accoutrement. <laughs> oh geez. It wasn't like a teddy bear googly eye. Uh, no, yeah. it wasn't like like oh when I <laughs> shake this fish, its eyes move very fish like. Uh, I think it was it was something that they were putting over it like to try and sell things uh, more high. I don't think that they were. It was like at a food giant, you know, where they were like, uh, right. like like they're gonna wait until you get home and then unwrap your shrink wrapped fish to be like, what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. All right. Uh, Justin, your next headline is Trump shaped ecstasy pills seized by Indiana police through traffic stops. <sighs> oh, that, that's especially hard because it's Indiana. <laughs> right. Well, <Yeah. laughs> I would. I. You want to know what? I'm going to say fake. Oh, see. Wow. That is then, actually then, a true headline. So the only reason why I was going to say fake is it seems real on almost every level, except I was hoping that my, uh, my I had my finger on the pulse of the modern drug market uh, <laughs> because I haven't really heard of ecstasy. Ecstasy is kind of an out of vogue term, and it is a vogue for which I certainly grew up with. But mm. I, I find myself in my mid thirties saying ecstasy, and I sound like my you know parents when they would refer to pot as grass. You know, uh, <laughs> it's, yes. it's it, it's just a just an out of date term uh, where all the kids the kids call it Molly, right, or just MDMA. Mm. Um, mm. Which is, it just, you know, and then they'll swear, these kids these days, they'll swear like, oh no, Molly's different. As if every, you know, uh, fishnet wearing Jinko's dancer in the 90s at a rave listening to the Chemical Brothers had an FDA uh, a list of, of, uh, of, of ingredients and percenages right. on every ecstasy pill they took. Yeah. I, can't, yeah, I, would, um, I would actually so challenge the kids at Woodstock. 
So yeah. I, I would actually challenge your uh, your assertion that this is a real story if it wasn't Indiana. Like that's the key part right there because there's yeah just the stupidest weirdest crap. It, like people eat each other in Florida. People do the stupid stuff like, hey, I'm going to make ecstasy pills in in uh, with a Teddy Graham thing, make it look like Trump. Like, no, no, but but they were they were past, it was coming to Indiana. Uh, Although it makes sense that if it was in Indiana. You know, Indiana kind of is like the Eastern Europe of the United States, where everything kind of shows up ten years late. So, yes, right? Uh, yes. So maybe it would make sense that ecstasy is still alive and well in Indiana. Yeah, uh, that's that's yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> All right, um, this one goes to you, Amos. Mm-hmm. Popular teen, <clears throat> starting over. <laughs> popular teen YouTuber. Planning live on camera abortion for Bitcoin donations. Is that real news or fake news? Uh, I got. I got. I got to go fake. I got to go fake. That is indeed a fake news story. Like seriously, like is I don't know. I don't even know if that's legal to show something like that on on youtube i mean it would certainly be legal it might it might be against youtube's tos yeah i don't know what their tos is on 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 live surgeries but um i would not be shocked if we see something like that in 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 the next five to ten years but i think it would be more solemn than uh uh you know i don't think that anybody during that kind of procedure would be screaming uh, thank you for the tokens, uh, uh, Teddy. <laughs> Teddy fan ninety nine. Right. I kind of, exactly. I kind of took it a little simpler than that. I was just thinking of all the the supposed de-virginizations that have been attempted over the years, live on video. That they're, oh, well, but yeah, that's you know. that's alluring, right? I think like an abortion is something that is 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 by by all means, of course, more solemn. And mm. I think if you were to do it, it would be a political statement. It yeah. would be yeah. like in fact, I somebody this, who wants I think to this, demystify it or something. Yeah, I think this headline was was generated by somebody trying to uh, like stir up the uh, uh, like the, basically the right wing uh, folks getting pissed off because the I think the full article says something about she was raising money for Planned Parenthood. And and all of, yeah. Anyway, it's no, just one that of those, sounds like, like yeah, well, wait, yeah, some shit that gets spread around on Facebook, so a bunch of blue hairs can yep. say, "Well, like, thank <laughs> God, my granddaughter isn't going to grow up like this." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jeez. All right, Justin, all right. your next headline: Doctors remove live worm crawling under woman's face. Uh, I'm going to say that's real. That is a real story. I, this one surprised there's very, me. There's was, very little medically that I would say fake because <laughs> there's so much good real stuff. I don't even know. To to make up a fake like medical emergency story would would almost be unfair because it would blend in seamlessly with the weird <laughs> stuff right. that never happened. Yeah. See, I would have – if I was playing this game, I would have guessed fake because this sounds too much to me like the – you know, the uh, spider laying eggs on the woman's forehead. And then when she brushed her hair, all the babies came out. And I, it seems very much in that vein. I saw a video on Facebook today of a horsehair worm erupting from the back of a praying mantis that it, it had mm. driven to the water because that's the only way that, it, that its larval state or whatever could survive. So, like, it doesn't surprise me that there's worms out there doing all kinds of... The, the, maybe the rash <laughs> on my hands is actually a worm. Like, I, it doesn't surprise yeah, it me be. at all. Right, it, it very much might be. All right, Amos, your next headline. Scuba diver hospitalized after getting penis stuck in giant clam. Real or fake? Damn, it almost seems like I, I, I heard about this when I was in Okinawa and everybody was trying to scare me out of scuba diving. Um... <laughs> Uh, there was enough real scary shit in <laughs> in Okinawan waters that, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go fake, just because I haven't said fake in a while. Yeah, it, it, that that is fake. Um, Justin, could you see this being real though? A, uh, a a scuba diver trying to fuck a giant clam. Oh sure, I mean, 
scuba divers are weird people. I don't know how many <laughs> scuba divers you've met in your life, but they're odd. They're odd birds. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. All right, uh, Justin, your next headline. Green Although I will say, activist. when I when I when I used to be a waiter, I was in Florida. I was friends with another one of the waiters was a, a scuba diver, as like he did both gigs, and uh, he was one of the coolest people I've ever met. Very very, you know, either you are the coolest like Matthew McConaughey laid back person ever, or you don't have any friends on land, so you figure you'd try to see. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I and, uh, I don't have any personal experience to defy that that definition you've just put forth. So <laughs> I, I'm with I'm with you, Amos. I don't have my breadth of experience. Oh no, I'm, I'm saying all the scuba divers I've met fall into one of those two categories. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Justin, your next headline: Greenpeace activist gets arm bitten off after hugging shark. Real or fake? I mean, this is another one of those where I'm sure people have been have their arms severely damaged by screwing around near sharks or wearing some kind of thing. So I'm going to say real. That's and Anna, I, I mean, look, this that's just a, a fraudulent. This is a fraudulent game. Like, I mean, it's like you can't like I'm sure this has happened. You can't just be like. Uh, 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 you know, a man bites dog. Uh, with a man in a green hat, you know, is a bit a dog. And then it's like, oh, nope, sorry. Uh, that was, I'm sure there was a man with a red hat who did it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck That's, you. Yeah. I, th I think the operative word in this was Greenpeace activist. Mm. And I think well, that sure. Thing I mean, I guess, it. yeah, I guess Greenpeace <laughs> it also, I guess they wouldn't be activists. They'd be volunteers. Right, mm. like they're, it's mm. an actual organization. This is the minutia right. I got to put up with on a regular basis on this show. All right, yeah, all right, whatever. <laughs> I don't care. Move on, move on. Let's 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 blow through these. All right, this is the last one, actually. Amos, you you have the last one. Okay. Florida woman fleeing police gets corralled by cows. Is that real news or fake news? A Florida woman being chased fleeing by fleeing police. Yeah. Yeah. She's she gets corralled by cows. I'm gonna say it's real because it sounds kind of ridiculous. I imagine it not happening in Florida. That is that is real. I, I had to be sure that I got Florida in there somehow. Somewhere. Yeah. See, crazy. Um, you yeah. Used, you used to was, live in Florida, man. Is it as crazy as everybody says it is? Well, see, I mean, I lived in the Panhandle of Florida, so and any Floridian Bama. will tell you that that's not really Florida. <laughs> Well, but no, but that's that's the beautiful Neapolitan ice cream that is the state of Florida, right? You, know, <laughs> yeah. you have you have Alabama and Georgia because you know those two states, uh, you know, are so you know unique. You got to combine them into one slurry that is <laughs> North Florida, uh, and then you have Disney, right? Mm -hmm. And then also Disney slash. Tampa Bay, which is basically just kind of like a, a, you know, if a town was founded by Jimmy Buffett, like that's kind of Tampa. <laughs> um, and then, and then you have South Florida, which is like basically just all the, the, the cocaine and tourism. <laughs> cocaine you know, and tourism. And fraud. Yeah. And fraud. <laughs> yeah. Fraud. Basically for, you know, if you want to know about South Florida, just imagine an alligator running a credit card scam. Like that's basically <laughs> what South, that should be South Florida's mascot. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So the final score just, in this game, just, just, just an, an alligator in a, in a beat up Honda Civic driving by you in the parking lot, offering to fix a dent that doesn't exist in your car so he could steal your wallet. <laughs> Oh, uh, have you oh, have you been approached lately I, by anybody trying to sell a a stereo system out the back of their truck? Because not here, not in not in not in uh, uh not in California, but uh, all manner of things sold yeah. out of the back of a car in Florida. I've it never is, never is, had to happen up here in well at, at all ever until it happened twice in like a two week period of time in the same parking lot by different people, and then it happened again like last week. See, this used to happen to me at stoplights when I lived in Vegas. <laughs> like, literally at a stoplight, a dude would jump out of his car and be like, dude, I got these speakers, man. 
Like, See, really? Vegas and Florida are also very similar because they're <laughs> uh, South Florida because they're functionally places where people at one point, I used to joke about this with Florida that like, you know, when I was in high school. I'm like, like, this is how we were all born. Like 18 years ago, or, or I guess 20, right? Let's give them time to get here. All of our parents were sitting in a snowstorm somewhere in the Northeast and a, and, a, and a Jimmy Buffett song came on and they said, fuck it. And they left, right? And then they came down here, they found something to have sex with, they procreated, and now we're going to high school in South Florida. Like, that's pretty much how it all happened. And Vegas is similar at some point, except instead of it being a snowstorm where they're like, I want to go where I never have to deal with this again, it's uh, uh, I want to know where I can make, uh, you know, I make I make good money betting with my buddies, I, you know, I'm actually really good at poker and imagine how much better I'd be if I did it full time. And so they move out to Vegas to live the dream and then find themselves trying to flip a fraudulent stereo system to you. in the park. <laughs> Now that does yeah, bring in an, a, uh, an interesting thing. Last time we had you on, you had just recently flipped over to uh, podcasting full time. Twitch was about to go through a ton of changes as far as a platform for podcasters themselves um, yeah. since then you've released, uh, uh action news. You've okay. done some solo shows. You've done some more night attack live shows that aren't part of South by or, uh, or, uh, uh Ner- you know, the big three South by Nertacular and dragon yep. con. Yep. Um, where, like what, what's next for you, Justin? Like you, you kind of seem to be, you went from, Hey, I'm doing this thing. And then now two years later, you're everywhere. Well, thank you for saying that. I, 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 I don't, I don't feel like I'm in many more places than I was before. But I, I do, I do appreciate it if it, if it, if it looks like that from the outside. Uh, you know, look, I, I, this is kind of the the blessing and the curse of working for yourself. Is uh, you get to do whatever you want, uh, but your boss is a dick. So uh, it's 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 cool that I can get out and. Uh, I, I can get out and do stuff and I've loved doing everything. So, I mean, to ask what's next, more, more of, more of all of it. I mean, I'm sure there's another game on the horizon. We're still, to be honest right now with contender, right with contender games, John and I are, uh, are really kind of focusing a little bit more on the business side of it. I think it's an element we've been so focused as creators that we've kind of neglected the, like, hey, let's also market our products. Like, <laughs> it can't just be about, you know, uh, you know. I don't yeah. know why everything. This is a very. I'm I'm using very sexual metaphors for whatever reason tonight. But like, <laughs> you know, it can't just be all about. It can't be all about you know fucking and getting pregnant and delivering. <laughs> like, you know, at some point you have to raise your children, and mm. that's what we're kind of doing. We're trying to focus a little bit more on that so, now. So speaking of, speaking of marketing the game, um, I, I think the last time you mentioned it, or at least the last time I remember you mentioning it on, uh, I believe it was PX3, you were talking about calling libraries of Congress, or, or uh, I'm sorry, presidential libraries. Presidential libraries, yeah. Yeah, no, I, where I called, are you at I called that? every I called every presidential library. Um, you know, it's, it's a process. I don't think that these places necessarily uh, buy new stock all that often, which is kind of the reason why... I wanted to reach out to them because I, I feel like we're kind of a, a unique product. Um, and but, once you're uh, in, you're kind of in, right? As long as it sells once in a while, you've just got a constant feed of, of uh, like a constant slow trickle of people buying the, the product. Well, I mean, to be honest, I, I don't know how much that stocking in a presidential library would sell for us necessarily. I, I do know that uh, stocking in a presidential library would be very cool for us to say, find us at the James McKinley presidential library, for example. Right. Yeah. Or if we were able to get into one of the, you know, the bigger, more famous presidents, that would be even better. So, uh, not that the McKinley library is not awesome. Uh, big <laughs> shout out. Uh, but, uh, I think it would be more for like name recognition that like, uh, I think what we want, the, the place that we want to be with contender specifically as a game is like, this is for, history nerds and education right Mm. and it's fun and it's easy but it's like we know we made a party game 
So if we can sell it as something that is that also leverages the fact that we did all this research and also leverages the fact that we're family friendly, then the rest is we got it right because mm -hmm. we know the game is fun. It was built for a bunch of people at a bar. Like it's going to be a blast in a classroom. It's going to be right. a blast with family night. So uh, that that's just kind of where 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 that is. And then you know, other than that, action news is is still we're just we're you know about to you know launch that kind of officially retail um, in the mm -hmm. next coming weeks. Now that all the Kickstarter stuff is out, so um, you know we'll, we'll 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 see where it goes. But I'm sure there's. John and I are always talking about new games and, and uh, I'm sure we'll have another one of those on the horizon. Although I'll, 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 I'd be shocked if our next Kickstarter wasn't politics related with the 2020 election coming up. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so speaking of politics, I was wondering if I could, I could take a, a, a little peek behind the curtain of, of PX three. Uh, sure. By the way, I love, I love that show. And one of the things that I think is wonderful about it is how you 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 take a neutral stance. Like you don't come at it from the left, you don't come at it from the right. Um, you 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 pretty much call it down the middle. And that's what I wanted to ask you about: is down the middle really uh, what you think all the time, or or are there times where you struggle to bring the the headlines in a neutral way? Like are are there times where you feel very strongly one way or the other? but you like grit your teeth and present it from a neutral standpoint. No, I, I don't think I ever grit my teeth. Uh, I, nor do I really feel like I censor my own political opinion all that much. Um, mm. It's funny. I, I thought about this the other day. I did another interview and, and, and they asked me kind of a similar question. And, and I think ultimately the benefit that I have with doing PX3 is that I am a former journalist and both of those words are equally important. You know, mm. I am, I am, you know, I got a useless degree in journalism, not because the degree was useless, because I was useless in that plot. Uh, <laughs> and, and I've worked at in newspapers and in newsrooms. Um, many of my friends are still in the profession. So uh, that is an element in a culture for which I am familiar and I understand. And the one biggest thing in journalism, good journalism, and this is what a good editor will drill into your head is that you are always going to be the most wrong when you are the most sure without the facts. Mm, mm, and in mm. politics, you very rarely have all the facts because a po politician's job is very literally to create a narrative, you know? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. for me, uh, I don't expect much of politicians except to be politicians. Um, if I were covering alligators, I wouldn't expect them to be ballerinas, you know? Uh, <laughs> right. And so I don't expect much of politicians except for what they are, which is even if you're to understand that, that their goals are pure and they are there to advance the most righteous, amazing aims they have to play the game to do it and my the only thing that i can do is not be too sure uh, that i understand what's going on and every time that it seems specifically in this climate when everybody wants to be a hundred percent sure about everything like i feel like if you're going to sum up physically if a mime were going to sum up how our modern thought process or modern kind of collection of the most people who are the most dialed into politics, it would be the like, uh, you know, the, the like bad guy wrestler who like, you know, uh, uh, throws the good guy out of the ring and then like kind of slaps their hands together. Like as they go, uh, up and down, if you, if, if you can imagine right. that, in your head. <laughs> yes. like, right. cause that's, you know, as somebody who consumes, every element of the political spectrum, that's it. You know, there's no better example. Do yourself a favor right now and go to two places on Reddit, reddit.com slash r slash politics and reddit.com slash r slash the underscore Donald. And you will see two places that are absolutely sure of two very different things, despite the fact that they're talking about the exact same thing. Like <laughs> yeah. it is dual reality. And 
So my my only goal on that show is to understand that everybody is very, very sure of themselves and then ask both why. Where are your facts? But mm-hmm. what about this? Have you thought about this? And don't be rude and don't be mean. You know, I'd like to have fun. You know, we some people have to go to the poop buffet every once in a while. And we like <laughs> to spice things up with, you know, the pole dance and everything. Um, but I think that's also an element of the former journalist. The former part of it is, number one, I don't have to protect the job. I don't have to protect sources. I don't have to protect anything, really. I just have to talk to my listeners. and They're the only people that are that I'm beholden to. But also... I can act like I used to act in the newsroom because that I think was always the most fun part of journalism for me was hanging out in the newsroom and having the conversations that, you know, weren't fit to print Mm. to to, like speculate on like, well, I wonder if it's this person or like Mm. reading a news story and being like, that's a shittily written story for for this reason, this reason, and this reason, or like Mm. making a, a joke like the poop buffet. Right. Like that's the kind of the poop buffet really is the kind of joke I would that would have been a running joke in a newsroom. Um, you know, that would have been the kind of stuff I would have said to make other reporters laugh. But you can't do that when you're also trying to be a reporter, when you're <laughs> trying to be a, a truth robot who finds facts and synthesizes them into a digestible thing. But I can do it because I'm just an asshole with a mic. <laughs> right. So the way that you described that r- reminded me of the aristocrats joke, how it's like the comedians joke for other comedians. They don't yes. ever present it on stage. <clears throat> um, Amos, do you have any, any final question for Justin before we get on to where we can find everyone on the internet? Um, uh, you know, I had like 43 of them, uh, but I didn't write them down. Cause I was, no, uh, <laughs> Actually, I I would like to know. So uh, about oh shit, almost two years ago now, I interviewed you for a, a show that I was trying to start called Dismantled, and we talked a lot about uh, the the fans of Diamond Club, or really uh, yeah. Diamond Club as the fans of you, or how you, that, that intricate relationship. We actually kind of went into it quite a bit. Um, has that relationship changed in your mind over the last couple of years from? this support group and you know, there's a lot of friends in there to something that's more important as you go longer as an independent self employed, uh, podcast and uh, Twitch personality. Um, I don't know if it's changed because I wouldn't know what, like at what point to flash, like flash freeze time Mm -hmm. and, and say that it was always this thing it's always been something that's been changing and evolving and, and turning into different things. And, and you look at people that used to just be guys in diamond club used to just be in the chat that are now doing amazing things. Uh, you know, and obviously at times there, there are better times and, and worse times for the relationship with the community. And I think the switch to Twitch was certainly one of them, um, where things were, you know, uh, uh, I don't think everybody was on the same page for a little bit. Um, and, and some of that might've also just been a pressure valve on other latent kind of issues. But the only thing that you can follow to me, the only guiding North star is that what the wise and sage, uh, Tom Merritt once told me that you get the chat room that you deserve. And if you want a smart, kind, ambitious, loving chat room then you try to be smart kind ambitious and loving to them and and ultimately the internet is a self-selecting place you get to be exactly where you want to be at every single moment and if people identify with those elements then that's what's going to be there and now the form that that takes man it's it's all over the place we have a very snarky audience because we do very snarky shows and sometimes, you know, like when you, um, let's say, totally made up science fiction scenario, like let's say that you, as an offhanded remark, uh, say on your 
comedy podcast that if I lose this game, everybody can call me a failure for a week. <laughs> that, uh, you know, every once in a while you open up your Twitter account and you're like, well, you know, you have 18 people calling you a failure first thing in the morning. <laughs> And you're like, well, fuck you. Oh, wait, it's a bit. Okay, I guess I did that to myself. Um, you know, sometimes that's that's good. Sometimes it's bad. But by and large, look, none of this would be possible. Nothing, nothing, nothing in my life at all would be possible without chat realm. And I don't lose sight of that any, any second of the day. And yep. if people would like to have more of your musings into life, politics, and all things awkward and funny... Where can they find you, man? Well, of course, you can find me on Twitter at Justin R. Young. But uh, it, it, podcast wise, uh, there are two, well, three shows. Of course, Night Attack uh, comedy podcast with Brian Brushwood, which anybody who's listening to this probably already knows. Uh, and you probably already know these other two, too, but I'll do the plugs anyway. Uh, jury. Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of people might have listened to Jury at some point and then kind of eh, let it go. It was a very long hour uh, mm. per week. So I retooled it a couple months ago. And now it is a very manageable, very, very digestible 15 to 20 minutes, four days a week, Monday through Thursday. It is jury daily, same feed. So you just search for the same jury feed and, and, and that, uh, that's, that's that. But I think it's, uh, it, it is a much improved version of uh, that format, and I have loved it, and, and the numbers and uh, the emails uh, seem to have backed it up. So give that a try if you haven't, and then, of course, all the politics talk. Uh, politics, politics, politics is my uh, politics show. Awesome. Uh, Justin, real quick, I, I do want to comment on the new format of your show. I, I'm a huge fan of it. The, the bite-sized jury show is perfect for my commute, and it came at the perfect time because – Three days a week, I used to listen to We Have Concerns on my drive to work. That show ended yeah. just as you were making the transition to a daily show. So you you replaced Anthony Carboni and Jeff Kanata on my morning commute. Well, I'll tell you what. I, that is uh, – uh, I, 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 am, I am fitting – I am ill-fitting in those massive shoes because that <laughs> podcast was so amazing and both those guys are so insanely talented. Yeah. Uh, but uh, look, I, I, I have always said that daily listeners to podcasts, daily listenership is just something different. It's just not the same. Uh, uh, there is a different uh, relationship that you have with that audience. And uh, this is the first time I've ever done anything like that. And I am thrilled uh, to be doing it now because, man, it, 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 it's amazing to kind of feel that energy when you are showing up every day and people are, are there for it every day. And I only expect it to continue to get bigger and better. I, I might be the outlier, but I actually missed the old format. So I'm hoping that maybe there's a stretch goal in one of your patrons to come back and do like the, the Friday thing and, and it just be the jury show. Cause I like the hype train, but there's something about you having a topic and then realizing you had 20 minutes left to fill and scrambling to fill it. There really made me laugh a lot. <laughs> You know, it, it's, it's, uh, I think that that might be an acquired taste. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know how many other people really liked it and I don't know how much I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I guess I found a format that fit how much prep I was reasonably ever going to do yeah. <laughs> because I put about as much prep into a jury daily show as I do an episode of jury, uh, <laughs> including the emails, by the way, that's the most amazing thing is that now I get so many more emails yeah. for jury daily and that I'm able to basically have, you know, jury, I would normally have three or four emails that we would go with. Um, but the other thing about Jerry Daly is I think it, it allows me – the biggest problem with the weekly format was that we oftentimes had these very interesting topics that people would bring up or darker subject matter um, that if I'm doing a weekly show, then I – and if I get like three revolutions of emails on a fairly dark – like let's say like the sounding thing, you know, like the mm. uh, uh, crunchy wrote in about – her fascination with sounding, which if mm. you're not familiar, 
cover your ears if you're sensitive. It involves sticking <laughs> rods up one's urethra, a, a, a male urethra, and stimulating the glands therein. Um, now, if I talk about that on a Monday on The Daily Show, that means that I can have three episodes worth of emails on it, and then by the end of the week, I'm done, right? We yep. spent three episodes taking stuff about sounding, and now we're out, <laughs> right? If when I had the, the weekly show, that's now a month. It's the it's the rods up your dick month on, <laughs> on the jury show. Uh, and that's where I think, um, you know, ultimately – that's the, the thing I wanted to steer into is that I never wanted that email to go away. And in fact, I want more of them. Maybe mm-hmm. not from Crunchy because Jesus Christ, I don't know what more that beautiful human can share that she hasn't already. Uh, she, but, she's, she's in the chat room right now, right now saying, God, I would love that month. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, she had it. She made it. Like she, she, she lived it. Like it, 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 it exists. Um, so I, 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 I think it's it, it's just one of those things where it doesn't have to. I can give it the space it needs without like and, and but like because I didn't want to I didn't want to get to a point where I was like either not reading those provocative emails or not getting those slices of life that you're not going to read anywhere else. Because I do love the idea that jury can go from, hey, I had a fight with my wife to I want to shove rods up my uh my ex-boyfriend's dick and like uh although i guess those are both relationships so that would be handled on a relationship thing but also like other stuff right like i want to do better at podcasting you know yeah. stuff like that i want to like i love having that range because i think i can be if there if i if i can toot my own horn i feel like i can weave those two things together in a way that not many people can so that was an element of the daily show was that it was just being able to just do more of it. And thank God the audience followed along with me and has emailed even more than they ever have before because, uh, you know, that, that audience is, is so passionate. And, and, you know, I really, I really can't, I can't say enough that like, there is, there is no, there is no me without you. If you are listening to this, what would be the, the one place you would tell people to go to find you? If you only had one thing, do you have a, a website that collects all of your links? Yeah, you want to know what? Justin Robert Young dot TV, I believe, is it? Let me go there right now to make sure. You can go to my my fancy new website that I never plug, uh, <laughs> despite the fact that I made it and it looks good. No, nope, that's uh, that's legit, and I'll throw that. Oh wow, thing. this is very professional looking. A very yeah, dapper just... listing, jury. Yeah, um, Justin yeah, so... Robert Young. Not TV. That, then that's where you can uh, email me. You can find out more about me. You can see my reel. You can find my podcasts and sign up for the free political newsletter and see some uh, professional pictures of, of, of the gerbs. Um, but, yeah, no, it's uh, always, always uh, uh, great to talk to you, boys. Hell yeah. If anybody's interested in, in the uh, less exciting things that I have going on in my life, check me out on Twitter at RM underscore Del Noche. Uh, pretty much everywhere else on the internet, internet, I'm either Del Noche or Del Noche 77. What about you, Amos? Uh, well, self-deprecation is a brand on the internet, and I sell all types of wares over at Ethan Kane on Twitter. So cruise on by there and find me. You can find the show at Ritual Misery. And, of course, we want to give thanks to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music. See what I did there? I tried to cut down the, uh, the number of shout-outs. Um, more importantly, though, thank you for listening. From Kent, from Jury, from me, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-A-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y